vocab. We don't believe in wasting our time. Let us all say Baraka Tayahawa, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem, Racha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. This is just a quick impromptu <coughs> video. I was just listening to the elder Manatazakba, you know, on a you know a video that he just did on I don't know how much of that got caught because uh this thing is the feed is acting up today. But uh I was just watching a video that the elder Manatazakba did and pretty much, you know, he was uh addressing a uh, conversation that him and vocab had on the on the on the uh comment section of one of his videos and uh pretty much you know vocab is desperately trying to get us on his platform you know because he knows that we have the truth you know deep down inside he knows that we have the truth and that's why he keeps coming after us because if you feel that somebody is not a threat to what you are teaching you won't even bother with them you know when we address topics when we address anything we address it for the purpose of defending the gospel you know he's doing it because he's being paid by his handlers now if you say what proof do you have of that i don't have any proof but knowing the tactics of the devil you know uh to coin a phrase that the brother was using the elder was using you know we know that that is the case because we understand about the infiltration of governments as well as the infiltration of religion. You have the Roman Catholic Church that, you know, set up two factions of inf or infiltration mechanisms, which two factions of, the, of their infiltration mechanisms. The one that goes into government is called the temporal power which you have Jesuits that train just to infiltrate uh, governments to overthrow them and turn them over to the grasp of the Roman Catholic Church. And you also have, you know, the uh, religious faction known as the, uh, the religious faction is known as the, uh, uh, right now it's uh, escaping my mind. I know it's a temporal power and the, uh, I'm not sure if it's something on the apostolic, something like that. If it comes to me, Lord's will, I bring it out. But those are the two types of factions of the uh, Roman Catholic Church for the infiltration, you know, of both government and religion, you know. And their job is to get into a particular, you know, uh, anything that goes against the Roman Catholic Church, of course, to, you know, turn them back to the Roman Catholic Church, <coughs> which pretty much is nothing more than the precept of men. Now, this devil is desperate trying to get us to come on his platform, and we t keep telling him over and over again, we don't care to be on your platform, and we're not going to be on your platform. We don't need you, you need us, you know? This is why you're constantly coming against us. Anything that you have to say, any scripture you have to go over, any question you may have, we've already addressed it many, many times. You're the one that avoids addressing anything, you know? And the scripture in Peter says that somebody asks you the hope that is in you, you're supposed to give an answer. And you're not giving an answer. You know, all you do is you try to cast doubt on what has already been established, you know, for the sake of leading souls astray but the messiah yahweh said it best my sheep hear my voice and they follow me so you're you're only going to get the ones the lord don't want and we don't understand well we do understand because you're the wicked and you don't understand you're not going to get it you know but this incessant as you coin one of the elder apostle gabar's words this incessant you know drive of yours to try and get us on your platform it's basically just a waste of time you know we're not going to wait we don't believe in wasting our time vocab you know we believe in teaching the word edifying the sheep as the brother said we're prophets we're teachers you know we're administers 
you know, of the Lord, ambassadors of the Lord, to bring out his truth, his prophecy, you know, and the, you know, scriptures and uh, instructors to teach it, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, dealing with the Israelites. Now, we are a prophet unto the nations, pursuant to Jeremiah, the first chapter. But what we have to tell you nations is what your future judgment is going to be. And your future judgment is going to be slavery, captivity, you know, and that's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything else outside of that. But but that you will be a slave in the kingdom of heaven if you are a heathen, you know. Now, as the elder pastor says, you know, from time to time, which we've said it also, you better hope that you're an Israelite or if not, at least a Hamite or an Ishmaelite or something other than the Edomite. You don't want to be an Edomite, could, you know, because Esau is through. But nevertheless, you know, that's our job. Our job is not to do anything else but tell you what your future is. Now, when the kingdom of heaven is established, it will be established upon a different set of principles and rules that are here present in the world today that do not, you know, get a second look at except by the Hebrew Israelites, the same ones you try to demonize. And that set of rules are the law, statutes, and commandments of the scriptures that will be enforced in the kingdom of heaven. You know, <coughs> Salakia. Now, one thing that the Christians do, so-called Christians, is they say that the law is done away with. And the law is not done away with because if the law was done away with, how in the hell will the second covenant be fulfilled? How will the Lord be able to put the laws, statutes, and commandments into our inward parts if the very thing that is going to be inserted into us is done away with? And if that's the case, and you devils out there say that we're in the second covenant already, then why is it that the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible are not being ad adhered to? They're not being obeyed. They're being taken lightly. They're saying that they're done away with, which is a total oxymoron. Because in the kingdom of heaven, pursuant to Isaiah 2 and Micah 4, I believe it is, what our job is going to be is not to teach each other because we're going to be perfect. Every Israelite man, woman, child is going to be perfect in the kingdom of heaven. It's going to have the laws written upon our foreheads. You know, we're going to be changed. We're going to be perfect. So our only job as men of the nation of Israel is to teach the other nations. And what are we going to teach them? Are we going to teach them how to farm? You know, are we going to teach them how to play hopscotch? You know, are we going to teach them how to drive? There ain't going to be no cars in the kingdom of heaven. You now, what are we going to teach them? Are we going to bring them to universities and, and teach them about sociology and different other, you know, curriculums that they have in these different colleges? No, we're going to teach them the very same thing that these Christians say is done away with, which are the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, you know, which are going to be enforced in the kingdom of heaven. And that's why in 2 Peter, it, speak about, it speaks about, uh, you know, the laws, I'm sorry, the, uh, this world being destroyed in a new earth, which is the same earth, but under new management, being established under the principles of righteousness and where are the principles of righteousness found within the same bible that they claim to uphold today which they don't because if they did hold up the scriptures this society america would not be crumbling like it is you know when you do the right thing in the sight of the heavenly father right but you nations can't especially you edomites but i'm just making a point when you do the right things in the sight of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem and Shai, you prosper. You know, your kingdom does not crumble. Your kingdom does not collapse. Your kingdom does not corrode, whether physically or morally, spiritually. You know, but in this society, we see a total demoralization, a decay, you know, and a foul fashion being pushed upon the earth 
So much so that it's not even a thing anymore of choice, you know? Like they, they tried to make it seem at one time. Now is if you don't go along with that lifestyle, they try to impress that shit upon you. They try to push that shit on you. You know, they try to make you want to get into it and accept it. You know, and if you say anything about it, you're hit with a crime. You know, you could go to jail for life or whatever the case may be. So how can this be a righteous society when immorality is being pushed through the planet Earth? And the Lord said when the new heavens and the new earth is established, it's going to be established upon righteousness. <coughs> so what is righteousness? Righteousness is what is contained within the book of morals, laws, statutes, commandments, which is the Bible, the law. Well, it's a lucky for that. You know, that's true righteousness. That's true holiness. That is what's going to be established upon the planet Earth today. You know, I'm sorry, uh, in, the, in the kingdom, which we're getting close to it, you know. The, hour, the, the, day, the night is far spent, you know, the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, you know, to par paraphrase uh, Romans the 13th chapter, you know. But that's it, you know. You know, you, we're not going to waste our time on your platform going back and forth with you on issues that we've dealt with and spoke about year after year after year after year that your demonic ass came on you know you when you came on youtube you started persecuting the israelites you know the hebrew israelites now when you first started you were nothing more you were green you were a cherry you know you still getting your you know you were getting your ass slapped all over the place spiritually by the scriptures you know you didn't have any answers you was all fucked up but after a while, keep being the devil, keep pushing, keep probing, keep gathering information for the sake of, you know, trying to turn it around. You've built up a technology. I'm sorry. You built up a what's the word I'm looking for? You built up a way. Um, you built up a uh, your teaching has elevated since you've been fucking with the Israelites. You know, to put it in, in a street vernacular, you know, your, your whole teaching style has elevated because of, you know, your interactions with the Israelites. You didn't get that from these, you know, uh, cemetery schools, you know, that, that uh, like Elder Apostle Tahar coins it. You didn't get that way from them because when you came out of that bullshit, you know, you was not teaching like you are. Well, you're not even teaching today, but you were not speaking like you are today. You got your cojones, your balls, from interacting with Israelites. You know, we, through the spirit and power we have by Shim Hao Shai, have helped you to elevate your game, you know, in that bullshit that you teach. You know, and you have yet to answer any questions, you know, that we have, as the brothers have been addressing to you. You know, we've asked... Many questions in the past that you just totally avoid, ignore, act like it ain't there. It's not going away. Just because you ignore it ain't going away. Scriptures say, what if some do not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? The Lord forbid, you know, that the Most High be true and every man a liar, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and overcome when thou art judged. You know, so why, are we, 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 why would we waste our time on some old nonsense that we've dealt with prior to you even being on the scene on YouTube. You know, when you was a snotty-nosed kid, we were out there dealing with the same exact questions from the same exact Christians out of the same book, you know, the same arguments, the same scriptures that you come in with now, going back to the 80s, 90s, and beyond, we've been dealing with that. You know, me personally, since 1993, you know, the elder apostle to our since 85, other two apostles since uh, 90, and the rest of the bishops from about 93, 94 and above, you know. So why would we waste our time going back and forth with you on something that we've addressed so many times already? The same issues, 
You know, you're not going to get a different answer. You're going to get the same answer that we've been given for the longest, which is the principles and tenets of the scripture, the Bible. You know, you just got to come to a realization, which you're not, that, you know, you cannot change the narrative of the scriptures. The scriptures say what they say. It's a contract, dude. You know, and until you get a grasp that concept in your demonic head, which I know you know, you know, you're not going to get it. And you're not going to get it anyway. <clears throat> but it's a contract that was made with Abraham. The, and when you deal with a contract, the only benefactors of that contract or beneficiaries of that contract would be the ones that are written within the contract to receive the benefit. Bottom line. So until you deal with the contract, sign the contract, big boy, sign the contract. Until you deal with the contract, you are not going to be able to get it, but you won't get it anyway. You know, and this is why under the penalty of what the scriptures say in the law, in Proverbs and in Revelation 22, you have to remove the nation of Israel outside of the contract because that is the only way your demonic ass can get anything remotely close to what the scriptures speak about is by removing the nation of Israel out and inserting yourself and the other nations in. All right. That's what you have to have that replacement uh, theology and supersessionism to remove, you know, the Israelites out of the equation so that you can fit yourself in there. But that's not in the contract. Because if you brought that contract before a judge and you try to present your argument, the judge is going to laugh at you because the prima facie evidence, which is the, you know, on his first face, you know, I believe the term was apostolic succession for the, uh, for the uh, other, for the Jesuits on the religious side. But if you try to present that argument to a judge, he will laugh at you because upon prima facie evidence, which is the evidence on his first face, everything directs to the nation of Israel as being the people of the Most High, the elect of the Most High, and the beneficiaries or benefactors of the goodness of the Most High, which he promised to his friend Abraham, you know, that his seed singular would gather you know would inherit all of these would inherit the land all nations didn't inherit their land and would inherit all of the blessings of the lord and those that bless would be blessed and those that curse would be cursed so you are wasting your time my man vocab and we don't believe in wasting our time because we're going to do what you know our, our forefathers before us did in these times and before Going back to Ezra 4, we, you don't have nothing to do to build with us. Coming all the way to, to uh, the elder Abba Bivens, you know, yeah, I said Bivens with a V. Um, and uh, pretty much, you know, and that is a sentiment, is you just forget them, you know. But you were speaking about Jake, but even you nations, we just forget you. Because at the end of the day, you're... You know, uh, future is slavery. That's all you got to concentrate on, slavery. Now, the only hope for any of those people out there that look like the nations is that they are Israelites that just happen to look that way. Which I know, I know, I know it sucks. You know, trust me, I know it sucks. But that's just, you know, the road that the Lord has for certain of us to go through. For whatever reason, you know, the Lord has. This is his program, not ours. You know, and there's a reason for everything, you know. You have to have uh, uh, obstacles and obstructions in your way sometimes to keep you at a certain level or keep you level-headed. You know, because some cats, you know, if they would have looked a certain way, maybe they would have been, you know, super proud. Who knows? You know, but nevertheless, that's the only hope that you individuals out there that look like the nations have. But if your line goes to any of those heathens, guess what? You're going into slavery. Bottom line. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
So Heyman, Vocab, Malone. We don't believe in wasting time. And neither should you. And as the <laughs> beloved elder Positar says, you should go and see if you can get a lawyer to sue these colleges to get a refund. You know, because you've been duped, my man. You know, and you're finding that out more and more. That's why you scarfing down Sicilian pizzas, you know, because of your anxiety and your depression from all them years and all that money you spent in them colleges and you finding out that the truth was given to a bunch of so-called disgruntled individuals that the, that the world will not even look twice upon, you know? Will not even consider. And that's how the Lord operates, you know? He said he chose the weak things of the world to confound the strong. He chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, you know? So that's, that's it, man. We're not gonna waste our time. We don't believe in wasting our time, bottom line, you know? So if you wanna waste your time, keep on playing, you know, Hebrew hopscotch, as you call it, with those other Israelites that would give you the time of day. We are an elite group of men of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Lord willing, you know, and we don't believe in mingling with the lower class. <laughs> you know, we don't believe in hanging out with the likes of you, okay? We don't believe in dialoguing with the likes of you because if we do that, we lower our standards. And we're not about lowering our standards, we're about elevation. We're only going to deal with things and substances that have, you know, intrinsic value to them. We're not going to waste our time, you know, going backwards when we already crossed those T's and dotted those I's long ago through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shai. We're not going to go backwards. We're going to go forward. Now, we will address a lot of those issues and topics over and over again that you so called so Christians bring out. Why is that? Because that is our job, you know, to edify, to give the sense, to reprove, to correct, to admonish, to exhort. That's the only reason we'll go back and forth, you know, as far as on these videos, platforms, to address these topics that we have addressed so many times ago, so many times in the past, and I have been defending for, you know, for, uh, um, decades already, some almost four decades, you know, so wrap your head around that, you know, yeah, so we're not going to lower our standards as elite men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, to deal with the likes of you, you lower our peasant class, you know, you other nations, read Ezra, fourth chapter, you know, Zerubbabel, Joshua, and the rest of the leaders back then told him, you have nothing to do with us to build to the Most High. We're going to do that alone because he only gave that to us. And you have yet to address the ministry of reconciliation, the gospel of reconciliation. All right. Reconciliation means to be brought back into the good graces or the good favor or the friendship of someone. You cannot be brought back to something you were never a part of. So stop wasting your time and stop wasting our time because we don't believe in wasting our time. You know, so with that, I'm uh, signing off. <laughs> and Lord's will, you brothers and few sisters have been edified. Till the next time I say, Shalom.